Welcome to Take 5 with Laura Life. I'm Damien, um, and I just want to take a minute and talk to you about my life's journey through faith and my personal life. Now, I've been with Lord of Life now for about 20 years. Uh, some of my biggest memories are with this church. My mother being married. My sister, Lauren, being baptized. My brothers and sisters being confirmed. My sister being ordained. And most recently, me and my wife being married. Now, I've always had a strong connection with my faith. I've always had a strong connection with the Lord of Life community and the church. Um, and I have Pastor Debbie, my mother, and my family to thank for that. They've always driven me to do more, to do something else, to step outside the box, to push myself to be somebody. Uh, and that means a lot to me. Now, when I'm 21, I, I got a, had a conversation with Pastor Debbie. We talked about creating a new music ministry. It was gonna be me, Jen, Pete, and Gene. Gene used to sing with us a while back. Now, all I was to do was to play guitar and sing in the background. Play guitar, sing in the background, and be there by nine. Awesome, I'm 21 years old, I can go out and do what every 21 year old does when they're on a Saturday night. I can take a nap and then I can be at church on Sunday. No problem. This will be awesome, I'll make it work. That has to be the hardest thing I've ever done. And I could have never been so wrong in my life. I would show up late. I would not show up at all. Or I'd show up tired from the night before. But I grew up. I stuck to my commitment and I made it happen. I put 110% into every service to the point where I sing too hard that I can't talk until Thursday at practice. I'm still a little scratchy and practice sounds kind of weak. But I do it, I love it, and I wouldn't change anything in the world. And I've made friends in that group that are my family. That group is an extension of me. Like, I love them so much. Now, in that growing up, I never knew what I wanted to do. I never knew who I wanted to be. But I knew two things. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to help people. Cool. So what I decided to do was to go into retail but I always ended up in an administrative or a marketing type sense in that job, sometimes doing both. So I got to kind of help people and I got to make stuff. So I had to fill in the hole. So I would go and work with different charities or I would do different things, um, make videos for companies. I would go out and make pictures or their advertisings for other companies or just influencers. I had a stint where I joined a couple esports teams. That was cool. Um, I even just make music on the side just to do something. Uh, but there was always a roadblock. Now I'm going to say roadblock a lot. There was always a roadblock stopping me. There was always something that just turned me to the other way. Now what would happen is that I would have to pick that thing or my faith. And what would end up becoming is that this thing would just go away. It wouldn't exist anymore, but there would be one thing left and that would be my faith. And I caught on to that and I stuck with it and I just followed it. But at this point, I was starting to get drained by all these roadblocks, by everything popping up at me. So a year ago, my wife comes up to me and she tells me, you're unhappy. You're depressed. You're miserable. Quit your job and we're fine. You can chase your dream. You can figure out what you finally want to do. Okay, so like a good husband, I ignored her. <laughs> I, we have bills. We've got 
this bill, that bill, the rent. We've got things we want to do. I can't just quit my job. Until one day I get a message in the mail, in a mail, in an email saying, we have an opportunity for you. We're looking, we have an opening on our esports team and it's a bunch of my friends. Cool. I jump at that opportunity. I quit my job and I have the time of my life. We're on top of the world. We're like playing games every day. And then we get into this tournament. We get second place. And the next day my team gets dropped. So this roadblock now has left me miserable, depressed, unhappy, and now jobless. So now I'm upset. I start looking for other teams, but then I receive a message from my sister, Ashlyn. There's an opportunity for you to work for a charity. They're looking for a social media and marketing guy. Awesome. It checks the two things that I feel that I look for in a job. It's cool. I have the experience. I have all the qualifications and I hype myself up and I get so excited to the point where I, I'm getting this job. It's mine. It's, it's cool. I, I was just a little too cocky because I didn't get the job. And now on top of all those other things, now my ego is now broken and my pride is gone. And I've hit an all time low. And I just can't, sometimes don't wake up in the morning. I don't feel like waking up in the morning. And my family and my wife and friends are all there to support me and I love them for it. And a couple of weeks go by, just dragging, dragging. And then I receive this text message. Let's go out for lunch. I have an idea. Now, before I move on with that text message, I want to let you know where I am with Florida Life. I play music every Sunday. I go to practice every Thursday, mostly every Thursday, but I'm at church and I'm a little bit more active because I'm trying to fill my time. So what do I do? I start editing videos for the church, recording pastor sermons and putting them up on YouTube. I start creating a video series called Lord of Life is Mine. And it was really fun. It was awesome. I was filling that hole. I was filling that void with more church. Now I want to get back to that text message. Let's have lunch. I have an idea. It was Pastor Debbie. I've seen Pastor Debbie as a part of my family since the day we met her. Um, she's always been there for my family during the good and the bad. and. I was excited. I haven't gotten to talk to her in a while. It would be really cool just to catch up. So I go to lunch. We sit, we talk, and we catch up. Then the idea comes. How would you like to be the marketing and media manager for Lord of Life? What? Hold on. Rewind. So you're telling me the job that I was just excited about doing all these things that I get to do them, but now I can do them for Lord of Life. I can do it for the place that I've grown up. I can do it for these people that I love and th who I see every Sunday. Yes. She tells me, she tells me that you have 10 hours a week. You'll come in, you'll record uh, on a Sunday, a sermon, you'll edit it, you'll We'll make other content during the week and it'll be fun. It'll be awesome. And my head is now exploded with joy and excitement. She tells me to think about it. I don't need to. I tell her, yes, right off the bat, I'm doing it. Okay. You start this Sunday. Okay. Pack up all my stuff and I get ready for that Sunday. I clean off my cameras, wipe off my hard drives, and I'm good to go. Let's go. Let's do this. If I would have known what this Sunday actually was and what this Sunday would have meant for this church, I would have taken more pictures. I would have taken more video. I would have done more. Now you might be asking yourself, what was that Sunday? 
my first day as a Lord of Life employee was your last day at the Lord of Life Church. Oh, when that following week, we were told we couldn't be a church right now. We had to close our doors. So another roadblock pops up again. So now me looking at this, this is a roadblock. This is now just a wall. And it's the one thing that never was wrong. And I can't go there. And it sucks. But I shoot Pastor Debbie a text message. We're recording a sermon. Uh, tell me when a good time is for you. We'll record it. I'll put it up on YouTube. I'll put it up on Facebook. Let's give these people church. Okay, sounds awesome. We get it done and we did a great job with it and we kept going with it. So we decided we'll do a little bit more. <laughs> we'll start doing Bible study on Skype. And that was a train wreck, so we went to Zoom. Bible studies every Wednesday, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Please let me know if you want to join. Uh, but then we get that done and we move on and we evolve it into live service. How hard could that be? How hard could live service be? We'll learn it along the way and we'll just go with it. A live service is a lot harder than it looks. It, I, <sighs> A lot of time goes into those, but it's the most fun I've ever had. It's the most joy I've ever had in a project. And if I didn't have my community, my family, my wife, my pastor, my church, I don't know if I could do it. And I'm not just blowing smoke. I literally, this is one of the greatest excitements for me um what drives me to do it is if i didn't do it how would lord of life worship how would we do this now it's terrible that we can't see each other and it sucks that i can't share the peace it's terrible to me that i can't sing it kills me that i can't sing on a sunday But I know we're together. I know that on a Sunday that you are there alongside me worshiping God. And that is one of the greatest feelings ever. That is so cool, especially right now. Right now, where you can't see somebody. Now, why, Lord of Life, why am I telling you this? Those roadblocks I saw up, I don't see them as roadblocks anymore. I see it as God opening a door to another path that is what I am meant to be, what I am meant to do, what would make me happy. I feel more like a messenger now than I have ever in my life. I'm helping spread the gospel and helping spread the Lord of life to more people now than I could have ever have thought of. And I wouldn't change it in the world. And I'm the happiest I've ever been.